With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 3. Greetings, conversationalists across the fruited plain. It is Eric Erickson with you today. I'm glad you've tuned in. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, as long as you're relevant, coherent, and make me look good, we might let you on. <laughs> All right. Uh, I-, I want to resume the conversation on education and, and the Ivy League. This one is somewhat personal to me. If you weren't here in the past hour, Let me just review very succinctly for you. We are seeing in the academic elite institutions of America, the universities of Pennsylvania, Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, um, the University of California, Berkeley, major institutions uh, that the elite rely on for their children. We're seeing this horrible anti-Semitism. We're seeing kids marching in the streets chanting there's only one solution, which is a reference to Hitler's final solution, the elimination of the Jews. We're seeing this at George Washington University, where students overnight uh, projected onto buildings the language Palestine from river to sea, which is a, for some of you it may be subtle, but for most it's not, that is a direct call for the elimination of Israel. What is the river? The Jordan River. What is the sea? The Mediterranean. From river to sea, a, pal- a free Palestine, that means the elimination of Israel. And the people who project these images, they know it. The people who say these words, they know it. Uh, you you can pretend to be willfully naive, but they know what's going on. And it's happening to these major elite institutions. You don't see this happening at the Mercer Universities of the world, my alma mater. You don't see it happening at... Uh, the universities of Georgia, the SEC schools of America, uh, LSU, the University of Arkansas, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Alabama, uh, Tennessee, Vandy even. Uh, Vandy and Duke maybe a little bit. They're, they've gotten pretty liberal private institutions, but you typically don't see this stuff at those schools. You see it in New England at the the Ivies. You see it at the big prestigious schools up north. You don't see it in the south, and you don't see it in the Midwest where moms and dads who work hard in blue-collar jobs send their kids to college to get a better education than the parents had so they can have a better life than their parents had. You see it in the academic institutions of the elite who then march in the streets after calling for death to the Jews, call for Joe Biden to forgive their student loans. Yes, we are forgiving the student loans of a bunch of anti-Semites who wish to kill Jews. That's the Biden administration for you. But where do these kids come from? A lot of them come from elite public schools, magnet schools, and private schools whose parents sent them to these schools in many cases by choice because they wanted them to excel in life. I would rather my child be good then be great. I want my child to be a good person rather than be some great entrepreneur of wealth. I want my kid to treat everyone kindly but have a strong revulsion for what is actually evil. I want my child to protect those who need protection and to strongly abhor those who would be violent and abusive. And I want my kid to know right from wrong. 
and you don't get that training at a lot of private schools or public schools. You don't get that training at the academic elite institutions, right and wrong, or in a morally relativistic world, uh, out the window. Whether you're in an elite private school for high school and elementary school or you're at, a, at an academic institution, too often uh, they, they blur intersectional lenses and they teach oppressor and oppressed and intersectionality and postmodern theory on power distribution. I want my children to avoid postmodern thinking. Tomorrow night, I'm speaking at a charitable event in Atlanta, and it was scheduled, and it 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 it, it hurts me a little bit. And, and I don't mean this disrespectfully to the people I'm going to be hanging out with tomorrow night. Uh, my my kids' school, they're doing an event tomorrow night, and I'm footing the bill for it, and they wanted me there. But uh, I agreed to do this event in Atlanta. The event that is happening at, at my kid's school, it was originally on a Friday night, and I thought I could do both. They had to arrange it, and I couldn't get out of the one in Atlanta. It's a good event for a great nonprofit. I'm happy to participate. I really wish I could be at the event um, tomorrow night at my kid's school, though. They asked me to speak, and I'm not going to be able to be there to speak, but it's so relevant to what's going on in the world today. My wife and I sent our kids to a Christian school. We wanted our kids to have a Christian education. The public schools where we live are not good public schools. We have friends who have sent their kids to public schools, and, and they're very active. They're very involved. Their kids are in the the academically gifted programs at the schools, which is kind of a way out of the, the general run-of-the-mill curricula of the schools, and their kids did fine. But we wanted our kids to go to a school that reflected our values. We sent them to a Christian school that that essentially did not really reflect uh, the values the school professed at the time. They have a new headmaster now, and I hope they uh, are cleaning up, although there are still some problems there, um, particularly my kids' classes as they've gone up. We still know a lot of the families, and they still deal with a lot of the problems. My daughter has talked openly this year about the stuff that happened to her when she was a kid at this Christian school they were going to. Kids in the school, when I got up some prominence and didn't see eye to eye with the political views of some of the people in the school, kids of these parents set up Snapchat accounts and Instagram accounts designed to bully my daughter and try to convince her to commit suicide. My son was beat up on the playground. He was defending another kid, and the kid who beat him up openly blamed me for ruining the country because this was 2016, and I wasn't a Trump supporter at a Christian school. My kids were really harassed at this school because of what I did, and the administration didn't help. We complained. I showed up. We had conversations. Nothing ever happened. My daughter was pretty mercilessly bullied by one particular kid and had a teacher who paired her with the kid, intentionally, willfully paired her with the kid, uh, despite us complaining. And we had enough. I mean, our, our daughter was legitimately on the point of being suicidal because of what these kids were doing at the school, and, and the school just flat out didn't do anything. we wound up moving our kids to a different school where they are now. The old school professed to be a Christian school, but the Bible education was basically memorize a verse every week. There really wasn't a lot of substance. You'd have chapel, you'd have somebody come give some little sermon or stuff, but there really wasn't woven into the academic institution. It was just something you did because the school was church-affiliated. The school our kids go to now is a classical Christian education school where classical education, the kids in elementary school, they learn Latin. They have outstanding SAT scores when it comes to uh, the verbal component. They, they learn Latin as elementary school kids. They learn logic. My son is in ninth grade logic and speaking class right now. He's got to learn the different, what fallacies are. He's got to learn logic. Um, he's got to learn to give speeches that are logically coherent. He's got to be able to stand up in front of a room and give a speech. They have AP classes. My daughter has taken three AP classes her senior year. She's taken AP biology. She's taken AP calculus. She's taken AP American lit. Um, they're getting a great education. 
and they're getting an education that fundamentally woven into it is a Christian component. I mean, the the school they they pray a lot. They pray a lot at the school, y'all. I pray, but these people, I'm like y'all. Uh, you can you can shorten the prayer, please. We're, we'd like to get out of here. Uh, yes, I, I got to admit, it's like I'm one of those people who, when I say the blessing for a dinner, I'm mindful that there are people sitting around food that's getting cold and they would like to eat. And and and, and some of you, y'all start praying, and, and an hour later, the flies have eaten the food, and your eyes are still closed, your heads are bowed, and you're praying. I'm like, come on, God knows already. Be thankful, be grateful, and let's eat. All I'm saying is. We got our kids into a school that actually reflects our values, and there are a lot of people who look on our kids' school as, well, it's not the one that has all the options. It doesn't have the fancy football field and field house. It doesn't have all the the fancy tennis courts. It doesn't have all the fancy buildings. It's not a fancy school. The parents have to chaperone the kids on field trips, where at the old school, they chartered a bus whenever they went anywhere. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, and a lot of the families who are there They sacrifice a lot to get there. I say all this to say this. When you decide to have kids, and I hope you have children, if you're younger than me and haven't yet, you should. Don't worry about the world you may bring them into. I mean, God told Adam and Eve and then Noah, again, be fruitful, multiply. You're, you're, You're supposed to as well. The Israelites in exile, the the Jews in exile in Babylon, he told them to to be fruitful and multiply, have lots of kids. You're supposed to. And then you're going to have to sacrifice. Some of you can't because of your life, uh, because of what's going on in your life, you have to send your kids to a public school. And if you are, I hope your hands on and engaged. But if you can sacrifice, if you can find a small classical education school, they tend to not have as many frills as the fancy private schools, but they tend to give a great education. They're less expensive, but they don't have all the bells and whistles. But they give great educations. They, they give fantastic educations. And I wish you would consider making some sacrifices. And I say this because I look at the kids who come out of the, the elite academic private schools in the metro Atlanta area. I look at the kids going to the Harvards, even the ones at Emory in Atlanta, uh, the two lanes, some of the, these Southern Ivy League schools, and they're they're filled with poison ivy as much as the Northern ones. Uh, well, maybe not as much, but it's still not good. You got to, at some point, be willing to make some choices and take some sacrifices to improve the lives of your kids and ensure that your kids actually get a good education and ensure that your kids are able to reflect your values and aren't hostile to your values and that they can confront real evil. That your children will understand when they get old that there is real right and there is real wrong. And it's harder and harder the more money you pay to ensure that your kid does well in life financially. And so the question a lot of you have to ask is, is do you want your kid to be the CEO of the Fortune 500 and lose their soul in the process? Or do you want your child to have a soul and leave the world better off than they found it morally, spiritually, ethically? Do you want your child to be someone who can see 1,400 Jews murdered in Israel and march in the streets in the name of freeing Palestine? Or do you want your children to see the evil that Hamas did and realize, I don't want to be on that side? And if you're with me and and you want your children to know the truth that Israel's not an oppressor but was oppressed, was returned to its native lands, that it's on the side of truth and right, if if you want your children to be on that side, you've got to think very early on how you want your kids educated and where you want them educated. And the pull of this world is going to say your kids can be rich and famous and they're going to compromise with the world. And don't be surprised when they go off to some elite academic institution and come home woke. You cannot abdicate your child's education into the hands of people who hate your values and not expect your children to turn out without hating your values. I've got a lot of friends of mine who there's a school in Atlanta called Heritage Prep. It's another classical education school. And these people, they're not wealthy. 
and they sacrifice to make ends meet to send their kids to the school. And some of them, their kids could go to the wealthy schools. They they could go to the Woodwards and, and the Westminsters and the, these really wealthy elite schools in, in Atlanta. And, and, and they instead, they send their kids here. Smaller school, less frills, but their kids come out with their values intact. And they go off to college prepared to confront a world that's hostile to their values, and they know how to respond. You've got to take these matters into your own hands. You cannot abdicate your children's lives, so much of their lives, eight hours a day in some cases, to people who are hostile to your values and not expect your children to wind up not being hostile to your values. Don't expect to send your kids into a world that's hostile to your values without your kids turning on your values as well. There are Jewish parents who are appalled to find out their children are in Washington, D.C. and and, and Boston tearing down the pictures of the missing Israeli children. There are Jewish parents horrified their children have turned on their values. It's too late for them. But for those of you with small kids, it's not too late to take charge of your children's mind before the world does. Y'all, don't forget to text DONATE to 33777. Let's see if we can help those in need for Thanksgiving have a Thanksgiving meal. And I I got a prayer request. I rarely do this on radio. My wife, her strongman competition is this Saturday in Woodstock, Georgia. Um, I'm nervous for her. I'm I'm enthusiastic that she wants to try to pull a UPS truck and, and... there's like a, a she's got to carry a, a keg over her head and, and a fire hydrant and all these other things. I, I, she's telling me about it. it. Blows my mind. This is what she wants to do. But and I don't know that she really wants to. Do that. I think she just likes training this way. But she wants to try the competition. And this is kind of the trial run. There's actually a bigger competition in March that she wants to do. Uh, but my sister and brother in law are going to come in from Tennessee to to cheer her on with me and the kids. I'm nervous for her, but. I think it's really cool. I want to see her pull the UP. I really want to see her pull the UPS truck. Um, and if if that's the case, then she can carry me around the house. Uh, <laughs> so prayers appreciated. Um, it is. It's the competition is this weekend. Uh, God bless her. Now I got to tell you about Patriot Mobile. Uh, so many of you ask questions about Patriot Mobile, and it, they're legit. They're a cell phone provider. And you can go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric and move your cell phone business to them. I have a Patriot Mobile cell phone myself. The coverage is great. He's in the same cell towers you're probably already using. In fact, in some parts of the state uh, where I am, I get better coverage on Patriot Mobile. Um, You can move your phone number to them or you can get a brand new phone number from them. You can, if you have an unlocked phone, take it to them or get a brand new phone from them. And then here's what sets them apart. As their profits grow because you've moved your business to them, they then grow their giving of the conservative causes you care about. So they fund the pro-life cause, the Second Amendment cause. They fund uh, veterans and first responders. They fund conservative candidates. They particularly focus on supporting conservative parents running for school board seats against all the woke school board members. They do it quite successfully. Go to PatriotMobile.com slash Eric if you want to move your business to them, PatriotMobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K, or call them at 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation. 972-PATRIOT. Greetings. Welcome. I hope you're well. The phone number here, 877-973-7425. I want to play for you this audio from Fox 8 News. Uh, It is in Ohio. In Cleveland, for those of you listening on WHIO in Dayton, and for those of you on the live stream, got a lot of listeners who listen in Ohio on the live stream. Listen to this, please. This is important. Further than even people who. It's an issue Governor DeWine feels strongly about, so much so that for the first time in office, the governor and his wife, First Lady Fran DeWine, recorded a commercial explaining why they believe the amendment goes too far. Speaking with Fox 8 today, Governor DeWine explaining why he feels the proposed amendment is a bad idea, saying it should be defeated and the legislature should pass a law that he says a majority of Ohioans could be comfortable with. Issue one just goes much, much too far. Uh, it's a constitutional amendment that would be enshrined in our, in our Constitution. It would be permanent. It would trump all the laws that we have today. Uh, it would provide that abortion could occur at any point uh, up until the time of birth. Uh, any any point, late-term abortion, it would allow. And it would also uh, trump or overturn an Ohio law. You know, those two things just go much, much further than even people who are pro-choice 
uh, want to see in our Constitution. Now, they left out, they, they edited out a key point here. that So the ACLU has written a pro-abortion constitutional amendment in Ohio. Right now, it's expected to pass unless people show up on Election Day or, or get out and early voted in Ohio. Uh, and it, this, this legislation, the, the way this constitutional amendment in Ohio is worded, shapes up the fighting for the future. They're, they're calling it a pro-choice measure. They say that this legislation, that if enacted and put in the Constitution, would protect abortion up until the moment of birth, which is too far for most people, but it also does something else. The language of the legislation or of the constitutional amendment proposal would also enshrine trans rights for kids in the Ohio Constitution. Now, that sounds radical. That sounds like nonsense, but it's actually true. The way the constitutional amendment in Ohio is written, all reproductive choices would be protected in the Constitution. All reproductive choices and choices about one's health would be protected, which means under a fairly comprehensive reading and study of the of the constitutional amendment that uh, trans rights would be protected. A, a doctor's right to transition a child would be protected because each individual, regardless of age, would have their reproductive choices protected, and those reproductive choices can be to be sterilized, not just abortion, but sterilization as well for a kid, for a minor, enshrined in the Ohio Constitution. Now, before you say that can't be, think of all the things you've said that about in the past, but that came to be. The ACLU is trying to advance trans rights using the wave of pro-abortion support in the country. They're, they're trying to undermine parental notification rights through this. It's a very radical proposal. It would be the most radical uh, abortion constitutional amendment in the nation, even more so than what California has provided already, which is already abortion until birth. This one goes beyond that. It's a very comprehensive piece of legislation. Those of you listening to WHIO and, and in Ohio generally, you need to understand that this this amendment one that's going to be on your constitu- on your ballot – it is a deeply radical proposal drafted by the ACLU that on the surface purports to just protect abortion up until the moment of birth, but actually enshrines uh, a comprehensive reproductive care and rights into the Constitution in such a way that would protect transition surgeries, uh, gender transitions for minors and things like that. So be aware. I mean, the reality is we have growing, such growing cultural divides in this country I don't know how you put it all back together. I, I, in all honesty, I, I try to be the optimist. I, I try to be really optimistic. My worldview, I have said so many times, I, I've read the end of the book. It ends in with a pale horse and Johnny Cash singing backup music. The world will burn. Uh, those of us who believe we get eternal life. Uh, you, you, you should be encouraged by that. But I look at the present state of affairs and I also see why people are so pessimistic. How can you exist in a country compatibly with people who believe boys can become girls and girls can become boys? They, they lecture you about being anti-science they scoff your religious views about creation, but then they have their own mythology about boys becoming girls, and they want to silence you for disagreeing with them. And these are the same people who refuse to be silent and don't want to be silent and resent being canceled for marching to the streets chanting death to the Jews. How, how is this reconcilable? I don't know that it is reconcilable for now. What I mean by that is we're going to have to get through this rocky period of time where there are a number of left-wing authoritarian types who blast you for supporting Donald Trump. Look, y'all know I'm not a fan of the man. But I find it really ridiculous that a bunch of left-wing authoritarians that would put you out of a job for not supporting trans rights laugh at you and scoff at you and call you a supporter of an authoritarian when they're the authoritarian tyrants. They don't want democracy. They laugh and, and say, oh, you're anti-democratic. You questioned the election in 2020. Have you heard what these people believe that they're chanting death to the Jews on college campuses in America? 
I don't know that we can, as a country, survive this division. However, there is a way to fight back against it. And it is to have more kids than they have and make sure those kids reflect your values. Breed them out, frankly. I mean, that sounds crass to say it that way, but you know what I mean. Have kids. Have lots of babies and train them up in your faith. Because the other side, for for all the insanity that the other side has, they're not really having a bunch of kids. They, They think they're bad for the planet. They're not having a bunch of them. So you go commit to have as many kids as you can. And uh, look, I, I got a buddy who's got a lot of kids. I think, is it 15 kids? So, I mean, he's got a lot of kids. He's got one in diapers and one in college and, and, and a bunch in between. And I, I was laughing with him last night that that he, is, he has all these little accomplishments with that many kids. Like I got shoes on all their feet. I said, yeah, but you got so many kids. What you tell your wife is you got feet on all their shoes. And then you put the milk in the trash and the paper towel in the refrigerator. He's like only every once in a while. But have kids and raise them up in your values. Educate them in your ways and get them in a faith group. And, you know, these people on the other side, they're not really procreating. They think it's bad for the environment. And they all get old. God has term limits. I mean, that's the thing so many people in in despair about the situation forget. God has term limits, and the people on the other side are not procreating. So you have more babies than them, and you inherit the earth. It's not hard. It just takes time and patience, and a lot of people don't have patience. But you're going to have to have patience because you do have to coexist with these people who unironically put coexist bumper stickers on the back of their car while chanting death to the Jews. That you, you are absolutely required to share space with these people and oxygen with these people, even though they want you dead or or at least out of the public square. Uh, And they can't force you to get out of the public square, but you can't force them to get out of the public square either. I do think, though, that uh, when you got guys like Mark Rowan and Apollo and uh, the Lauder family, you, you got John Huntsman of the Huntsman Foundation, and they're all pulling their money back from these Ivy League institutions, it is a good time to remind these guys that there are plenty of great institutions that uh, turn out academically gifted kids, but they're not these institutions, and they so often get overlooked because they're not the prestigious institutions. They're not. But they still have academically successful kids who can still go on to be the CEOs of the Fortune 500 without the anti-Semitism, without the dogma from the left. I think about all the, all the great colleges out there that uh, get a little recognition. Covenant College, that's uh, part of my church denomination, the PCA. Covenant College, a beautiful campus uh, overlooking Chattanooga, Tennessee. There, there's Berry College up in Rome, Georgia. Uh, Presbyterian College. You, you got, I mean, you even got places like Clemson. I mean, for God's sakes, Clemson. You, you got good graduates from Clemson. I know some graduates from Clemson. They're good, smart, bright people, many of whom lead uh, major institutions, but they're not wokes. They didn't come from these woke academic settings. We, we we so often hear about the the Ivy Leagues disproportionately dominate the conversation because they're disproportionately represented in the media. The Columbia Journalism School grads, uh, the the kids who went to Harvard and Yale, they're actually the ones devoid of reality. They're the ones who need to go touch grass. The rest of you touch grass on a regular basis. You're grounded in reality, and you're not a bunch of anti semites. And all you got to do is have more kids than those people have. And eventually you inherit the earth. You should be encouraged by that. Now, some of you listening, you're, you're past your prime. Let's be honest. You're not going to have more kids. You're you're in your 60s. You, you've hit menopause. I, I get it. But what about your kids? What about your grandkids? You grandparents out there listening right now, have you thought about what you can do to help get your grandkids into a better academic institution, more reflective of your values? You grandparents out there who have have families that are in homeschool cooperatives, have you thought about helping out? You got backgrounds, you got home ec backgrounds, you got business backgrounds, you got law backgrounds, you got math backgrounds. Are you helping out? You know, I hate to quote Hillary Clinton here, but it kind of does take a village to raise kids. Yes, parents matter. Don't hear me wrong. Families matter more than the village. 
but a village of like-minded people coming together to help raise each other's kids and get them educated in ways that shun the wokeisms of the day is actually a, a potent weapon against woke. It is a powerful weapon. This is why the left is so hostile to school choice in this country, because the left is scared to death you people might catch on and advance an agenda that is pro-freedom and pro-family, and your children might learn it in school. The left wants to indoctrinate your children in the Hamas talking points and the wokeisms of the day by forcing you to send your kids to public school. They're still going to capture some because some people won't catch on, some people don't care, some people aren't engaged, and some people can't afford it. But for those of you who can, who are willing to make the sacrifice, think of how powerful you become over time when you have a large family of people whose values conflict with the zeitgeist of the world today. And other people do it as well. You fundamentally not only change the world, but you do inherit the world. I can't tell you the number of progressives I encounter on a daily basis now who really abhor the idea of a large family. Can't tell you the number of progressives I encounter who more and more are really opposed to bringing kids into the world because of climate change. They live in existential terror of it. But there are people on the right who are like, ah, this may be the World War III. I don't know that I want to have kids. I don't know that I want to bring kids into this insane world. No, no, no. The cure to the insanity is for you to have more kids, bring them into the world, and raise them in your ways, and eventually you inherit the earth. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Our side tends to have more kids and raise them with good culturally conservative values, and that's a good thing. I mean, demographically, the way this country is coming, but within the next hundred years, we're all going to be uh, partly Hispanic country music listening Catholics or Christian evangelical Christians, and that's a good thing. I mean, the, the Hispanic communities in this country, they're reproducing faster than every other group in this country. And as their families grow, they tend to either leave the Catholic, go into the Catholic Church from not being religious, or they leave the Catholic Church into Christian evangelicalism. They're going to be a bunch of Pentecostal country music listeners, and that's not really a bad thing for the future of this country. Large families of believers who know how to cook and barbecue and work and have great work ethics and great family ethics and, and can r rise into the Fortune 500 and improve society. That's a good thing. Be fruitful and multiply, you inherit the earth. That That's the cure for the insanity around us because those insane, woke, crazy people on the left, they don't want to have kids because they want to honor Mother Nature and they don't want Greta Thunberg to scowl. Make Greta scowl. Have lots of kids and drive SUVs. Now, one of the great organizations out there that is fighting for families, fighting for your right to have an SUV, fighting for the future of small government is Americans for Prosperity. They want you on their team. They want to train you to be a great conservative activist. They want to give you the arguments to be able to go into uh, the institutions of power in this country and persuasively and articulate, uh, articulate how to be for free markets and free people. They want you to be able to go to your local school board and support charter schools and school choice and give them the data to show them it's the right thing to do. They want you to be able to go to your local government or your state government and fight for small businesses and families and free markets and free people and deregulation. They give you the tools. They give you the knowledge. They give you the skill set to do it. They give you the skill set to persuade your neighbor. All you have to do, they make it really easy. Go to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. They will train you up to be a great effective advocate for freedom. They'll teach you how to be an activist for small government, and they will advocate on your behalf. They're a do tank, not a think tank. They go into the states and they do the work of the conservative movement, but they need your help. Americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here across the United States of America. The phone number is 877-973-7425, except it is too late for you to call in. So what sort of Speaker of the House are we going to get? Let me tell you what I know about Mike Johnson, the new Speaker of the House. Mike Johnson was a senior lawyer for one of my favorite groups, the Alliance Defense Fund, now the Alliance Defending Freedom. He was a spokesman, a national spokesman as well for uh, – the Alliance Defending Freedom, which is a great uh, Christian legal group in the country. They are the ones who represented Jack Phillips 
in uh, Colorado, among others. He was a trustee of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention for a number of years, and he drafted the law in Louisiana uh, that actually got rid of no-fault divorce in the state, making it more difficult to get a divorce in Louisiana. He also authored the Marriage and Conscious Act of Louisiana. It never became law. It was a Religious Freedom Restoration Act piece of legislation, but Governor Bobby Jindal uh, used it as an executive order. He is a very strong pro-life uh, Baptist from Louisiana who led the Life March in the shreveport Bossier City area for a number of years. He also led the fight in Louisiana to get rid of the Common Core Standards. Uh, God bless him for that one. Uh, he was in the Louisiana legislature, a conservative warrior in the Louisiana legislature, and became a strongly social conservative uh, member of the United States Congress. Yes, it's true. He questioned the outcome of the 2020 election. It's true. The media won't let him live that one down. But let's be clear here. It's actually a front for the media uh, to avoid actually attacking the man for his social conservative credentials. They really don't like his social conservative credentials. Uh, they really don't like the fact uh, that Mike Johnson will be a real ardent social conservative two steps away from Joe Biden. And I don't know if you've seen lately, but Joe Biden's not exactly in good health. So uh, you put Kamala Harris in there. She's adult. Um, Lord knows. But uh, Mike Johnson is now Speaker of the House of Representatives. All the Republicans voted for him. He was able to get uh, across the threshold. There were a couple of absences. And we'll see where this goes. Now, he's never been a committee chairman. He is a constitutional lawyer, however. He's never been a committee chairman, and he's never been in leadership in the House, and he hasn't been there that long. He's only been there since 2017. So he will probably be one of the least experienced members of the House to ever be the Speaker of the House. However, he'll have great advisors around him, which is good. That's Mike Johnson, the new Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, second in line to the presidency, a warrior for freedom and a strong social conservative. Glad it's him. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.